Jesus. There, situated against the wall, like right up against it, this vehicle of slumber from mattress firm, exit 221, a plane of sheets, a sea, white, 92% cotton. It's against the law to remove the tag. They'll call the army and drone strike your ass, you mattress terrorist. Engulfed, lies a body, awkward. Six foot three body, tired, exhausted, flesh apparatus, face down, sideways, mouth open, contorted, twist, and snoring, even though I swore I didn't. Drool on pillow, glad it isn't a germaphobe. I mean, really, bed bugs, pops it, blood, skin cells, flakes, dirt, grime, filth, feast, cannibal, Hannibal, Lecter. My mattress ate my liver with some fava beans, but I love it. Even though it eats flaky remnants of flesh, drinks blood, spittle, harbors parasites, it gives me sleep, dreams, a stiff back in the morning. Now, it waits, perfectly made, military style, private pile, like a lover, fluffy arms wide, for me, for me to sleep, sleep easy, ish. But here, at school, I cannot sleep. The mattress, she will have to go vaunting. Next up. Well, actually, first things first. Jared, why will your mattress go vaunting? Will you not see her tonight? Hey, everybody. I'm a poet, and I've always known it. I'm a writer, but my syntax could be tighter. A broader diction for my fiction, so I read. I read till my eyes are so are too tired to see. All the words into my head I appropriate till it's so full I can't concentrate. I awe and marvel about these striking scenes these authors create in their novels. Heavy and tangible and musky in my hands, take me on a journey so high, so great, that I never want to land. With every page I'm turning to save my curious yearning, I only have to sit back and take, here. In this land not my own, I'm always welcome with open arms. My home, never bother. A place where I find respite in genres of romance, humor, adventure, mystery, and all. horror. And when that temporary peace, that magic is over, I pick up another, then another, then another. It's like kissing a lover, you can never get enough. Ever. So I'm always looking with favor for these ties that sever the, lo the ties between me and my reality, where I'm just a girl living in a world with so many people desperately trying to save it. Just a girl moving towards the end unknown, growing up in a world with people fighting to keep their jobs, their homes. It's neither, neither set nor certain. Yes, the future is there, wide and wild and dangerous, especially for those less fortunate than the fortunate. In the realm of paper and ink, I'm not just the girl moving towards the brink of oblivion. I'm the girl who passes through time saving human and fairy, the girl who makes victory mine and overcomes the sick games of human quarry. I'm the girl who has seen angels fall and had fallen for one of those angels. I'm the boy who wanted to grow into a man strong and tall but will probably be killed, and to some paraplegic be forced to donate my ankles. This is what I immerse myself in, to get away from the everyday, do you get what I'm trying to say? In this place, you're in control of being able to flip to and fro between young and old, to live the past five minutes, five hours, five years repeatedly, or just to, just to skip to the end, just because you can, because you want to see. Prolong the pleasure or be satisfied immediately. Choose life or death, good or evil, right or left. Choose between this one or the other, but no matter what, disguise in droves of black and white is vivid color. Vivid color indeed. Right? You empowered the strong and meek alike. My morning foreplay, a boost on my tongue in the afternoon's aftermath. Sun and moon collide, midnight always prevails and veils my eyes. Till I met thee. One hit, one shot, I'm jack high on the beanstalk. Too much of you? My world is a whirling dervish, spinning on twigged feet. None. I'm one with the inner, inner terrain, value less and leading to stress. I'd rather the former. Black and rich is my lover. I follow every lava love puddle. Hot like a sauna, your steam stains the heart and teeth. Insomniac nirvana, you manipulate my matter. Mind over matter, high off black water. I want some coffee.
talking to. <laughs> Usually it sounds so good. Don't listen to what they say. That's the worst thing you could do. They'll tell you that you're wrong, that you're different, that you're not one of them. So what? Isn't it better that way? Do you want to be one of them? I didn't think so. No matter what they're going to say and no matter what they're going to do, be who you are. Hold your head high and never apologize. Seek your heart and when you find it, don't you dare let it go. Hold on to it. Baby it. Make it happy. Make yourself happy. Square your shoulders. Don't hunch them. Don't hide who you are. Embrace yourself. Don't let fear and doubt stop you because I know you're better than that. It doesn't matter what they say because you don't need their approval. You don't need them to find your self-worth. You say it's not about bravery, but I know it is. So be brave. And remember, you don't have to change for me because you're beautiful just the way you are. So wipe the tears from your face. And if you don't think you have the confidence to do it, I'll give you some of mine because I believe in you. So start with that. And don't be afraid to be who you are. There's always gonna be people who talk, who scoff, who say you're wrong. So what's the point in changing who you are? Of the Midtown Radio Series. First question, before I get started, I wanna ask a question to everyone. What does poetry mean to you? Now don't answer that, but I want you to think about that really quick. All these poets, all their words, you hear them, but what do they say to you? Sure, you have cursory reactions to, oh, that was too short, or oh, that was too long, or why do you say that? But what does the written word mean to you? Mm. What is poetry? What, do, what does art, spoken, say to you? Say about your lives, your experiences, your past, your present, your future. Keep those things in mind as our poets speak to you. Because you may learn something about not only them, but yet tonight, you may learn something about yourself. So with that said, with those questions floating in your mind, let's welcome back to the mic, the imaginary mic, Miss Jasmine. way back in the day when I just really hated love. But now I'm great. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> no hesitation. I hate love. Love is a liar. It tells me one thing, then does another. Its words are louder than its actions, at least to me. They tell me, oh, I'm in love with this boy, that he's in love with me. But what do we have to show for it? Because I want more than your friendship. Ever since you asked me to be yours, ever since I said yes, I know it's there. I want to believe it, but it's been so long since you've held me, since I've kissed you. And now I don't want anything to do with you because you're so far away. And yet every day I want to be with you. Love is a liar. Love is selfish. It doesn't care much for logic. It doesn't care if I'm confused, scared, tired of it, angry at it, or that I just want out. It's always there, looming over me with its oppressive weight, hatching insidious plans to make me mad. Mad at him, mad at me, mad at the world for having what I don't have. I see them together and I think, that should be us. But I, but I don't deserve it, right? Because I leapt before I looked. I turned my head disgusted. My chest sinks in and my heart drops to my bowels to be digested so I can't feel. That's my deal. Love is a liar. Love is selfish. Love is a virus. It snakes into our systems without warning. Makes us sick in so many ways. Those are senses, our common sense. Makes us act out of character. Puts bitter venom in words of, pits, puts bitter venom in our words where honey should be. This is not me. It causes all these maddening chaos and yet can send these tingles that call up our skins when we think of them, that extra special person. Love is all the above and more. It's confusing. It's a lot of things. Love is outrageous. And you can take that however you want.
this poem is about the internet. It's like, I came up with the idea when I was binging on random facts on the internet and stories when I was supposed to be <laughs> doing my schoolwork. <laughs> it got me thinking about what exactly is the internet. And uh, the name of this poem is called Login. All right. Visions of lives I'll never live. All the lives that's ever been, all in all, in one lifetime's time spasm, all expressed in a darkness that confuses and consumes. From eternal understandings to belittled screams of anguish, a darkness that threatens to be light. The native tongue speaks in uninhibited experience. Hear everything at a finger's twitch, a hum of numbers, without space, defined space, guide space. Every philosopher's epiphany at one time, every poet creating rhythm in one line. Time doesn't exist and history yields. Destiny falls on knee and we are cheek deep. Existential transformative experience, existential wounds in the third degree. What rose, the bullet or us? Do we heal the wound or does the wound heal us? Now what does time say about us? Who has the time? Well, we do. We keep it in our pockets all the time. Watch the pockets. We will keep watching the pockets. Watch the pockets, watch the pockets, watch the pockets, watch the pockets. In my pockets, pocket, pockets, I have a watch. Click, 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 click. The dirty gears spear on the quartz face of a circular glass. Childlike, we witter on Unlike the face of babes, we stare at time. Opening the truths of eternity in brass and gold, in wheat and grass, in brass and copper, forsaken as cane of old times of eternity's face, <gasps> and cogs of meshing scales and cold on the face in our pockets. Watch the pockets, watch the pockets, ooh, keep watching the pocket watch. Click it open like the firecracker, boom! Curious coon of fidgeting fingers of wonder and wonder. Lord, watch the pocket watches. Watch them as they watch us like a bird from the skies of heaven, as they cut the world into continents. Watch them as they bob and weave on the waters of waves, sway to the swoon of the moon. The pocket watch is time in our hands. Click, click, click. Hands of man create the gears, turn the cogs, and stamp the metal bond, bound in rotation of the earth and stars and moon and sun. Click, click, click. Chains bound to body, body bound to earth, mind bound to flow. On that time cannot be known, yet we put it in our pockets besides. Click, click, click. Time ticks in our hand, in our pocket, and our ear. Man clasps the chain, man winds it up. Click, 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 tick, tick, tick. Time's expanse in inches and increments. Watch the pockets. That is not an open invitation check or cloth hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we move on from time to our wonderful Lady Kate. This is City Lights. The first thing you should know is that the clouds cover the stars with a deep indigo blanket. The second is the lights. Tiny little bursts of warmth in a sea of darkness emanate from skeletal buildings that stretch for the covered stars. And where there's light, there's people. Maybe one of them is a mother working late to keep her family under a roof. Maybe she misses her only child, a son, so much that her heart breaks. 
Maybe one of those lights is a businessman trying to escape the cold grasp of an unhappy marriage and the truth of reality, an affair, a betrayal. Maybe one of those lights will have an idea that will change the world. Maybe one of them is you. Maybe one of them is me. The point is that you never really know them. You never really see. You can't tell anything about anyone from the outside, from looking at the pinpricks of light. No matter what you think is true, chances are it's not. The first thing you should know is that the clouds cover the stars. The second is the lights. Utter ramblings of Sigmund. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> Uh, so for a class, we had to write this poem um, called an ekphrastic poem where you write about art. And I thought, you know, I should use Salvador Dali. And uh, I did. So this is called Swans Reflecting Drugs. Probably Freudian, <laughs> Dali in and of himself, was Freud, thinner mustache, glasses only occasionally, an experiment perfectly messed up in his head, splay him out on the easel-supported, ant-filled hospital bed. Cross-examine the strokes, the color, hunt for the symbols, satiate your scalpel. Anesthesia will be ineffective. You can't just give him drugs. He is drugs! <laughs> the curly mustache, middle finger to gravity, the eye staring into souls, pupil black holes, history textbook photo event horizon, too close, spaghettified, compacted, nothing. Yeah, drugs. <laughs> Dolly painted this on canvas twice, guessoed, wide-eyed, potentially mustachioed. What do the swan lifts mean? One is newborn baby boy baby boy beanie blue, and what of the dude who is also a tree, bare and no leaves, the swans like fluffy county fair in the fall, cotton candy, smile with teeth and show a hole once lived in by a ruthless cavity, like clouds on water the swans won't sink beneath the oh so symbolic drink, the elephant's truck reaches, as above so below dependent on direction, polished stain, liquid glass, surrealist reflection, look at all of this, the color of the swans, the elephants, oh there's a Mayan temple, no it's just a rock. <laughs> Come view this with me, like an art historian, no friends but three PhDs. Look hard, do you feel, what do you see, it's all too unreal. Keyword, surreal. It must mean something, it must. Look again, look up, behind, behind, in between. The man was drugs, it could very well just mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> of what a poem means to you. Of what of our poets that have gone now said to you? Have they stirred something deep inside or have they reawakened some new truth? Close your eyes and read a poem. Now open them and let the night carry on. Miss Jasmine, the stage is yours. Okay, uh, this one is really boring. It's called Boredom. <clears throat> I'm writing this thing because I'm bored. Because I'm thinking of you. You, it's, it's always you. I can't escape it, I can't deny it, but I certainly can hide it. I can't, I do it so well, but you wouldn't know. He doesn't know, she doesn't know, they don't know, because I do it so well. Because I find this, I, because I find the clatter of this laptop keyboard pleasing, relaxing, easing, natural. These fingers that gross across these keys, warm and blazing, tapping down these thoughts, because I have nothing better to do. I'm writing this because I'm bored. Because I need a distraction, a distraction, a distraction, always a distraction. I'm writing this note out of sheer laziness. These are just my edited thoughts sitting in this chair, laptop warm on my thighs, eyes tired, because that's what I do. Oh, count the days I have done that. <laughs> sat down in my bed with absolutely nothing to do and let my computer literally cook. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that's where some of the best writing comes from, yeah? Yep. Um, 
true from weird places. Let's have our other lady back up on the stage. Madam Kate, the stage is yours. Hey, um, this is Dream Chaser. Hey, little girl. I don't know if anyone's told you yet, but one day you're going to have these things called dreams. You'll feel like you're flying. You'll feel infinite. You'll feel like you've been drowning, but your head's broken the surface and you're gulping down air. Nothing will hold you back. Nothing will stop you. You have a purpose now. Like I said, you'll feel infinite. Until they tell you that you can't have these dreams. That you shouldn't have these dreams. And that you won't have these dreams. Because suddenly you're not a little girl anymore. You'll feel beaten, bruised, hurt, trampled into the ground, the grit of the dirt between your teeth drying your mouth. You'll come back to earth with a resounding thump, and you'll cry out in agony as the tears stream down your face. But remember, little girl, that no matter how hard the scoffers laugh, and no matter how many critics wrinkle their noses in disgust and ask you why, that you will get through this. Remember that feeling of being infinite, and know that no matter how bloodied your feet kept from walking this broken road, this interminable journey of chasing those dreams, that you will find them, and you will catch them, and you will shine. chase our dreams. Well done, Kate. Welcome now, an explosion of emotion and raw, controlled insanity. <laughs> the last time, we welcome back Mr. Jerry Taylor House. This is called Obsensory Compulsion. Touching it would be like running your hand down a bark-ridden, mold-smitten, wooden cheese grater, each hole splintered unique, scars left on skin from cuts formed ridges, mountains rebelling against the overall flat and fermenting, like dipping dainty toes gently into the water after electrical wires had fallen into it. Touching it is shocking, heart-jolting, life-knocking, heart-stopping. Smell. I bet if it could smell, it would have the odor, aroma of a musky bearded man armpit somehow still spewing scrupulous shit, bungeant like a burnt body melting, festering, smelling wound infected pus field never healed. Taste. Galileo drank hemlock. This tastes similar, bitter, yet I am still physically alive, licking sweating nipples or pocket lint covered nickels. Copper is revolting. Sound. It is putting a megaphone with an air horn taped to it to my ear, trigger pulled on both. Screaming slews of profound profanities, blasphemies unheard of, God made death, crackling leather of a burning Bible, Satan laughing, calls me to go bowling. Invisible <laughs> and loud as a plane crash in my head, screaming I'm damned and I'm already dead. Sight. I see it like a bear with lasers for eyes and knives for claws, boasting a set of giant, not brass, but gold, diamond encrusted balls, cut through salm and also my skin. Make my hands shake like a magnitude 10 earthquake. Eyeballs egg so vivid I'll ball up my fist. Swing and try to hit it. I'll just crack my reflection in the polished glass. It'll spider web. I would feel the warm blood on my hand. I would see it drip here, the surface crack. I would smell the acrid burning, sizzling and fizzling out. And I would taste the metal sensation when I put my bloodied fist in my mouth. After that. <laughs> well done, sir. We move now from rough, obsessive, compulsive, emotions exploding to calm, to cool, collected. The story of a child. Mr. Reggie. The stage is yours. This poem is called The Radiant Child. She's sleeping again, the radiant child. And like the one before, and before that, I doubt she'll last. I see the weight of ages accumulating at her neck, and with it, Waz's demise. Her parents' history cursed her, and it can't be broken. Her parents' history cursed her, and it left her broken. Genius child. Milk from the young, born feet ablaze, running from a world and race that she can't comprehend. Is it a game? 
her life a modern day tragedy in plain sight as we are blinded by 10,000 lights professing manifest destiny. Sleeping child, fiction even, I lay at her side in love for she is becoming my truth. There, beside her, we lucid dream live in the dark and soar without sense nor tense beyond Colosseum schemes. And I think I saw God trying to decode the human spirit mystery. He couldn't fathom. We're living it. Our dreamscape landscapes where fate's been unchained and we've escaped history's claims and the people finally exhale and we exhale for a brighter today as difference and separation spoke in universe and all the same. And I want to stay here. I want to profess my undying love, but I'm cardinal by birthright. All I've ever read, felt, places dwelled, beliefs kept, dreams dreamt, love spent, accumulate to a mind state well aged to the very race that tramples her. My green eyes, cash casted or hewed to nature truths. Thank you. Lines and blinds of oak, the streets run far below. Cascading rivers of concrete, steel, dusty frames and asphalt pages, grinding my teeth to nail to broadcasting streets of hollow sirens and stoops. The wind is blowing, blowing faster and faster and faster and faster. It sets the humble leaves on the trees to dance in the breeze of filthy air and then stop! Beating bloody fists on the trains of nature, wind winding up to beat against the side of wooden doors and blind drawn windows to beat on the iron caged cars of sickly yellow and the pebbles of assorted gold beneath its feet to beat on the red brick steps of the church as a man without a home sleeps curled on the side looking for sanctuary from heated sorrow of artless hearts but beats go on beats go on beats go on on smoked up club sigs blazing out of halls and walls of white ivy tinder burning over deranged dead heads of beats beaten down, beaten down by earth-kissed tongues, beaten down by stained glass stairs, beaten down. That, ladies and gentlemen, has been the Midtown Reading Series. Much faster than expected, granted, but since when has art been dictated by time? Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for listening. And remember the questions I asked you tonight. Let them stay with you, and remember to come back and hear us again. Thank you. Thank you.